Most prequels are actually amazing. However, there are some that are the opposite. Prequels that pet out runtime or fill it to some people like me before I found out about this brand new term are shows or games that have a moment in a story that could have been easily removed from the plot without affecting the story significantly. Most have to employ some level of it to get the running time that is desired by the higher council but usually they are subtle about it or try to make the petting itself enjoyable. Not all are successful in making the petting subtle. A lot of the filters are very distracting from the advancement of the plot which taints the experience for the viewer or in this case players because I'm going to talk about games. One of the major examples is Borderlands the pre-sequel. Taking place before the first and after the second, Borderlands the pre-sequel has a similar story placement or structure whatever you call it to Star Wars Rogue One which takes place before episode 4 and after episode 3. The stories in Borderlands as a whole aren't all bad but they're not great either. A lot of them are pretty surface level, nothing amazing, impactful or anything of the sort. Keeping the series alive was one of the reasons the pre-sequel was made. The pre-sequel expands the series plot by showing how the villain from Borderlands 2 fell from grace and slowly became the villain which eventually led to Borderlands 2. Basically, this is the video game equivalent of the AI generated rise and fall videos that you see on YouTube except it's, it's not as bad. The pre-sequel provides more gameplay for the Borderlands franchise by building upon Borderlands 2 but also taking away a lot of stuff. It's one of the weakest in the series due to how much content was lacking in some areas like how the map looks a tad bit empty but at least it's not Saints Row reboot empty. You walk anywhere and it's a fucking ghost town. This was one of the most hated games in the entire franchise but after Borderlands 3 came out, fans decided that it was one of the best and I totally get why they why they did that because I was once a Saints Row fan. Technically I could say that both expansion packs for Half-Life 2 are prequels or pre-sequels if you want to be quirky like Borderlands since both of them just like the Borderlands pre-sequel takes place before, during and after the first game. I know that was wrong. This is nothing like Borderlands the pre-sequel. But I think you should shut the f- They're a fun example because these games not only expand the runtime of the franchise but they also expand the universe of Half-Life by inserting brand new characters and telling stories from a different perspective of how the Resonance Cascade look in the eyes of a forgotten soldier that was neglected by his creators and a guard who owes someone a beer. Catch me later, I'll buy you a beer. Sometimes showing behind the scenes from certain parts of Half-Life 1 like the part where Gordon was captured and thrown into a garbage disposal by soldiers who thought that he would die but if he did Half-Life 2 wouldn't happen. So these soldiers are actually fucking idiots. Or scenes where you could see Gordon jumping into the portal that brings him to Zen. Scenes like this truly make it feel like a prequel. They make the world feel expensive and they really make you feel like you're Adrian Shepard. It truly really keeps the original game alive by introducing newer characters and showing behind the scenes in crucial parts of the main story. Though both of these games aren't really necessary to play unless you want more content from this era of Half-Life which is exactly what they do. Another one is Vice City Stories, a prequel to Vice City and a game that showcases more of Lance Vance and his brother. In that game, you play as Vic who dies in the beginning of Vice City and that highlights one of Rockstar's biggest problem. Killing off characters that were once prominent like they're nothing. If they do this again in GTA 6, I will, I will walk to the headquarters. That's why I will walk from my country to America into the headquarters and I will beat them up. I will beat them 